Welcome to yet another exciting topic uh, about conversations and bonding tips for couples in courtship. What are those things that uh, couples in courtship should look at? What are the type of conversations that they must have as they prepare for a long time together in their marriage relationship? Kindly, if it is your first, sub, sub, first time to visit this channel, subscribe and like this channel for me and leave me a comment about how you feel. And if you're returning guests, you're so much welcome. And if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe for me. Let's dig in. Now, a gentleman meets a lady and they are, they are really convinced that their, their relationship should go to the next level and... Uh, they, they decide maybe the, the engagement has taken place or maybe before it takes place, but they are really convinced that they have to start uh, dating, they have to start their courtship, and uh, they live their life together. What are those things that young people must talk about in preparation for their life together? Remember that uh, it is this talk that you have at this time that is going to create a stronger bond, that it is going to be a foundation for that whole long life ahead of you. Now, it is this season, the courting, courtship. Others call it dating, others call it courtship, others call it relationship. But it is this season before you get married that uh, a foundation is laid, uh, informal rules are placed, and... Uh, the game is set uh, from that point. That is how the marriage is going to run. Now, if you lay that foundation in a wrong way, if you make so many mistakes during the courtship, during the dating, which involves lies and, and truth and uh, unrealistic expectation and a lot of pretense, there are so many things that are going to happen. You're going to fail in the later life, when the reality sets in. And so this point of courtship should be the reality opener. It opens the reality for you, and uh, you, it prepares the ground for a very beautiful relationship that is going to come. Now, some of the tips that we need to look at before I give you the five bonding tips, conversation and bonding tips uh, uh, ahead of us. We need to look at um, three, three conditions. First and foremost, you need to bring in these conversations, bearing in mind how long you have been together. For instance, there are things you can never say uh, on the first date when you meet someone. You know, you cannot meet someone on the first date or they have just told you uh, they like you, they are interested in having a relationship with you, and then you come and start asking, when are we getting married? It's the first day. You know, someone has just expressed his interest and is looking for an exciting time ahead of them. And so there are things you do not talk. You don't put the person on pressure about when your, 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 your marriage is coming, about putting the, the, the marriage dates, about coming to see your parents. You do not push for those things. And if it is a gentleman, you do not push the girl to come and meet your parents unless she is so ready. So when you are talking about these conversations, you are going to, the conversations we are going to talk about ahead and the bonding tips, you need to phase your relationship. In the phase one, okay, there are things you talk in phase one. There are things you talk as you get serious. There are things you talk about even towards uh, the time when you're going, when you have finally decided and you fix the marriage dates and all that. Then there are things you talk uh, at the last time. Now, Another introductory that I need to give you before I give you the tips also is that you need to find the best way, best way of introducing a conversation, uh, a best way of introducing a discussion with this, uh, your fiancé or your fiancé. For instance, the conversation or the discussion or the bonding tips you're creating, they should not be in form of interrogations. 
You know, you don't ask someone, what's your best color? What do you like to eat? Um, who is your best friend? You know, those kind of questions, they completely turn off the person and they really don't even want to know or they, are, they lose interest in answering the rest of the questions. And so you turn it off. It should never be a question and answer session. It should never be an interrogation. Uh, use uh, some tips like this. What do you think about present the topic? For instance, if you look at all these colors, what would be your best choice? You know, uh, uh, what's your view about this? Can you suggest for me, uh, you know, those are the tips. Kindly suggest what is your view. Please share with me. And when you introduce a topic like that, you'll get so much more information than bringing it in a question and answer session or in an interrogation manner. For instance, if you want to ask about uh, the relationship this person has with that lady or that gentleman you saw, you don't ask, what uh, were you talking about with that person? Bring it nice. You say, oh, you seem to like that person a lot. Um, uh, where is he from? Or ask gently. And when you ask gently, you'll get the truth and the truth in, in, in the plain, uh, comfortable position of the other. And also, as we bring in those discussion things, you need to be sensitive about the feelings of your partner. If someone doesn't want to talk about something, don't force it. Be sensitive when you're bringing a discussion and this someone doesn't want to respond. Do not push uh, to continue with that uh, discussion. It is at that time that you need to know this person is not interested at all in this discussion. Then you stop. And so what are these five conversation and bonding tips that we, we will look at? Number one, when you are relating, do not make it too formal. Many people are always looking at dressing in that little black dress or the little red dress and the gentleman is looking at the suit or that famous jean and, and, and the good shoes to take this lady out of dinner. When you make it a dinner thing and you know all the time you're meeting over dinner, then it becomes boring. And so make it so informal. Make it so informal. Yes, dinners are very necessary. But as you begin, make it so informal. For instance, sit uh, in a park, carry your food and all your drinks that you want and go with playing cards, go with the ludo. Uh, go with a skipping rope and explore every option of joy and fun and relaxation with this person. Now, during that kind of, uh, of environment, you are able to know what is at the mind of this person, what this person is thinking about. You are able to get them at their best uh, relaxed moments when they can uh, discuss with you anything uh, because they are in a safe position with you. In a formal position, someone is so worried about uh, how they are holding the fork, they are so worried about uh, if the juice has poured, they are so worried about whether they are doing it the right way. But if it is an informal, make it informal. Create these normal games that you play, that you played as children, and play them on your early dates because that one is going to give you a free flowing environment where information can flow freely and then you get to know this person. The tension goes down when the environment is, um, is uh, very relaxed. And then tip number two, discuss if this person is a reader and which I encourage everyone, learn to read something. Read a book, uh, read a novel, something for fun, read. And uh, if someone is a reader, discuss one of the books, share one of the stories that you read from that book. Now, by sharing that story, it, it, it opens up a discussion with the other person. I have seen many people, they get to a, a date and, you know, they're asking, hi, hi. And before you know it, each one of them is in their phone. Now, when everyone gets on their phone, then the relationship becomes so boring, it becomes so 
toxic it becomes like there is no excitement of meeting this person the next day and so discuss the book that you read and what you learn from me to the funny things that were in there and uh, of course don't bring a book where people were murdering each other or people were cheating on each other or people were you know th those toxic discussions when you are in a day to bring a book that is fun something that you read about that is fun now if you are not a reader you have watched a movie before uh, those funny movies those very interesting movies discuss a movie a fun one yeah the scene that you liked most find out which uh the, the, wh what movie this person is interested in and the movies they have of course if you share your own they will also come up and share their own and by the time you go home the bonding is going to be stronger and your relationship will grow and it will grow you know when you have bonded even when you are married the bond is going to be much stronger than uh, than people who just concentrate on, on going up to dinner and men sometimes do not know these things and uh, they think every girl wants to go out there dress smartly spend on expensive food those don't last it is the informal things where you discuss uh, the things that have made you happy that um, that you will eventually find uh, very interesting okay what are the things that you talk about these are the games and the informal things are in the first part of the relationship uh, and and the games and the running around and the hide and seek and all that those are in the first time second first time first phase of the relationship now when you have finally been become relaxed with each other and you love each other and you're happy with each other talk about the things that you regret and the things that embarrass you so that these things are not carried uh, within the marriage relationship now remember you have already created a bond through those informal visits and you're very excited together you're relaxed together you know each other very well and so in the second phase of the relationship talk about the things that have embarrassed you of course without losing your integrity and allow the other person also to talk about the things they regret and the things that have embarrassed them in the past if it is talking about exes talk about them and how you were embarrassed and the lessons that you learned because you are now already in the second phase of your relationship now when you discuss this there will not be a problem in the marriage or in the latter stage because you have been vulnerable to each other you've shared and you have overcome the embarrassment and the regrets now when you finish talking about the the things that you have you regret and you also talk about the things where you feel you have become a champion okay things that um you have done and you have excelled maybe with this person's help or maybe with your family's help discuss those things and uh, dream dream of how you can be a champion and so when you share the things that you have excelled in share your dreams this is in the second part of the relationship if you are a girl avoid this business of saying my man will look after me dream big dream big and set goals together okay goals may be difficult to set at this stage but dream big share what you think if you you you're working on something share what you feel you can do better in in the coming years and seek the support of of one another and then uh, yeah when you share goals then this person will know that it is at that time that someone will say I want a wife who is going to stay at home take care of the children so that I can excel maybe he wants a wife that is going to work at home so it is at this point that you are you will agree if you realize that you're not going to be the the stay home person then it is at this point that you end the relationship you don't proceed and waste your time and before you know it you have nothing to show for for the years that you spent with this person now uh, okay those are time savers time savers you you save your time you do not uh, wait for the relationship to go so far for you to stop it you get to know this person doesn't want me to work i can proceed or i can still go ahead and get married and uh, then we'll sort out these other things talk about your character flaws 
I remember when I was getting married, I told my husband, I said, look, uh, if you think I'm a very good person, no, I am big headed. I argue a lot. Uh, sometimes I'm stubborn. And he just said that from the way that you've said those things, in fact, I like you more. So talk about the challenges that you have and, 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 and put an environment of a willingness to change. Now, don't uh, expect change to come in like so fast. Okay, change doesn't come so fast. It takes time, it comes slowly, slowly, but there has to be a lot of, of willingness. Talk about those things that you find are a problem. I talk too much. I can talk, 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 and my husband is quiet. But he knew right from the beginning. I used to tell him, I said, no, for you, you are keeping quiet. For me, I'm talking. In fact, I have enough words for both of us and would laugh over it. And over the years, he has learned to talk because the person he lives with is a, a talkative person. So he has learned to talk. And so we talk and talk and talk and we enjoy each other. Now, the last things, of course, when you're talking, reserve your dignity. Don't uh, talk about things that will reduce you to nothing or will reduce your spouse to nothing. Talk and reserve your dignity. The last thing that I'm going to share with you is uh, in the last phase of the marriage, you need to talk about uh, the things that are very important. Talk about the money and be very honest in your discussions. Do you want to have a joint account? Do you want to have separate account and allow access to each other? How do you want to share responsibilities concerning the finances, concerning taking care of the children, concerning development project, concerning the relatives? Talk about all those. In a relationship when we were um, about to get married, I remember we agreed that we are not going to host relatives to come permanently to stay in our home. We agreed that they will come visit and then they will go. Uh, come visit and they will go. And so we have kept that from both our sides. I will don't agree on it and then it applies to one person. So we have all agreed and that is the role that we play with within our family. So talk about how you want to run the family and for ladies sometimes they pretend they want to buy their way into their in-laws lives. It doesn't pay you. Don't buy your way. Don't bribe your way into your in-laws lives. Because if you do that, you cannot sustain it. Create a strong relationship based on honesty. And that relationship based on honesty will go a long way and it will be strong and you will not need to, to keep buying yourself in. And for the gentleman also, it is at this time that you need to talk how you want to relate with your in-laws and how you want your lady to relate with your in-laws. Discuss and agree on all these things. But in the midst of all these things, Make them in a relaxed, a fun, informal environment. When your relationship finally succeeds, please come and thank me. I thank you so much for having you up to the end. Kindly subscribe, like the video, and drop us a comment. See you another time. God bless you.